I got the bead roller out and I put the dies on. These are the dies that I made last year to do the beads in the panels in the baggage compartment. It came with with these bead rollers here and I didn't really like them. They're too deep of a bead for what I wanted. To get a shallower bead you had to open these up to the point where there was no support on the panel as it went through and it caused the panel to distort more than it would have if it was fully supported. So I made these. This is a UHMW block here and this is an aluminum one and of course uh, not being a machinist uh, uh, not knowing what I was doing on the lathe, I wound up boring this one out just a little bit oversized. It's just right to take a wrap of notebook paper around there and that shims it up good enough that it fits tight. The UHMW one was the second one I made to match this one and it wound up pretty good. I took some measurements on it and it's uh, just about an inch or exactly an inch from here to the center of this bead. I just ran a piece of 40 thousandths. This is a cutoff piece and measured in an inch and run that through there and I don't need it makes just a little bit of a flange there. This where it's cut out uh, this is what I practiced the cut out for those uh, pattern for the, the hinge to cut out and fit around the hinge. Well it went ahead and beat it over a little bit but you get onto the part that wasn't cut out and uh, it makes a, a nice little flange on there. And I'd try to keep that line right on the outside edge of that roller. Okay, there's a little bit of a, a roll on that edge. I got a little bit of a flat spot on this corner down here. It's just a, a slight bead. I think I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up and run it through again. Okay. That uh, took a little bit of that flat spot off that corner, but it doesn't really matter. Makes a little bit more of a bead on it, a little bit more of a, a flange there. Uh, it's just right to make a nice tight fit up on that. Good enough. I'm going to take these, uh, the hinge and the uh, door panel here and take them down and squirt them with some polyfiber primer. I want to do that before I rivet these together so I've got uh, primer good protection in here in this seam and on the hinge where they rivet together. On these uh, float planes especially, these sea planes and stuff, they have a tendency to get moisture in between these laps. Water dries out and the salt stays there and it, it causes corrosion. And That's a big problem with uh, float proof, uh, corrosion proofing in a Cessna airplane. They do it after the airplane's manufactured so the seams don't get protection between them. So anyway, that's what we're going to do is take these down and, and paint them and then we'll bring them back up here and uh, rivet these together. Putting together my baggage compartment door, the rear one. <coughs> I've got it uh, drilled. i got countersunk for the flathead rivets. These are AN 426-3. And the ones I've got in my bin are 3-4s. I thought they would work, but they're a little bit long. So I'm taking them and cutting them off with a rivet cutter. Down to about the equivalent of a 3. Just put a rivet in the hole here, appropriate size hole for the 3. And I push it all the way down in there. There are shims on this uh, rivet cutter so that you can set it to cut different heights of the rivets, whatever you need to. But we just uh, need the smallest one, short one and that just shears it off and then you can't get it out of the hole. Oh, here it is. I got a 332nd drill bit and just uh, stick in there and use it for a punch to punch that rivet out of the hole. And there it is after it's cut. I'm using my hand riveter, hand rivet set again, and I've got a, a flat rivet set on the top for going on the rivet heads and then to make the shop head or the bucktail I put this number three brazier head in there and what that does is uh, it makes a kind of a nice pretty little rounded bucktail on there instead of having a 
regular just a blunt bucktail that that rounds those over makes them so they, they look a little nicer just a decorative feature so those are going in pretty nice now the number fours were just too long I put two of them in and they both nailed over I got good tight holes and everything it I just couldn't keep them straight so I drilled those out went through and made sure all the holes were deburred real nice so everything fit up tight and the holes lined up and we'll use the number threes uh, and three dash threes I've got three rivets in here so far and these have turned out real nice uh, pretty little bucktail on them chop head well, I'll keep going at it and get that thing riveted on there here's what the upper door looks like installed actually uh, it's pretty good it's gonna have to I don't know whether I need to put a little twist in it or not it's got a little twist in the frame as it goes around there uh, the door is still pretty straight but that's what it looks like there's the bucktails on there I think they finish off pretty nice with that brazier head die on it kind of rounds them off a little bit instead of being square I was trying to figure out what kind of latches to use on the, the baggage compartment door on this rear one the other airframe used South Co fasteners they're pretty nice I thought they had the wing head type like this and uh, those are kind of nice because you can just grab them and twist them and bring get them open you don't have to have a tool or anything like that and uh, the other airframe had these uh, cub crafters had these on the cowling and on the baggage compartment door and like I said it was pretty nice you just run out and twist them open and, and twist them closed when you got done with them problem with that is they only come in this I don't know what that's called decorized or something like zinc plated and uh, the ones on the cowling rusted pretty fast I replaced those with stainless steel I had to get just plain slotted ones and that's not bad you can just take a dime or a penny or or the tool you use for draining the gas to open them and close them I wanted to use those back here the problem with that is these uh, to close these got to line up vertically with the nut plate that they go into the nut that they go into this is a receptacle and so when those are closed and latched that wing lines up with this nut well with this flange here uh, on the, this frame on the baggage compartment see the nut sticks out if you want that lined up uh, with the slipstream that uh, receptacle sticks out so the only way to mount that is uh, vertically like this and then that would put this uh, wing 90 degrees to the slipstream instead of parallel with it I didn't want to do that and I tried getting the 82 size which is quite a bit smaller than this so this size that uh, we had on the Cup Crafters airplane was an 85 that's the size of the South Co fastener and that's the size of receptacle there's another size and it's an 82 and it's quite a bit smaller than the 85 and I thought maybe it would work this is the two receptacles together you can see there's quite a bit of difference but that one won't work in here either um, that, that actually turned vertical when I stuck it in there see, it just sticks out just a little bit so that didn't work well I had another idea and they have these clip-on style receptacles pretty much like a Tinnerman nut and uh, they just slide in like that and that would work but it still have to flatten this out to get that to slide over there and I didn't like that idea and it plus it leaves a, a sharp edge and stuff underneath the fabric right there which you can deal with but uh, I didn't like that too well uh, another idea I found was these receptacles here they push in and lock in in a square hole and uh, I thought for a while I had it all figured out that these were going to work and because they'll fit right on there like that but this former that goes up around here sticks right out into this flange and that doesn't give enough depth for that to go into either so that idea was screwed so the idea now is to uh, possibly use these Hartwell fasteners in there 
and uh, I, these are uh, I'm familiar with these I had 170 for years and these were what uh, went on the cowling uh, the access panel hatches on the cowling on the 170 um, the big pa uh, cover on both sides of the cowling and there were two of these on each of those and uh, those will work though I have to cut a slot in here for this uh, tab to go into but these will work fine so that's what I'm going to use I got my first holes drilled out in this pattern I laid out a line used the marker to draw a line around the where the opening it goes for that uh, Hartwell latch and then I drilled holes in it to get rid of most of the material or some of it I'll go get the nibbler tool to nibble out the rest of it and then with it in a file I'll get that down to shape this is what I used to cut the holes with I used this one for the bigger hole and then a smaller one there for the smaller hole they call them a rotor brooch annual or cutter they're just the thing for cutting through sheet metal uh, they don't tear out um, they'll cut and leave a little donut there or a little uh, plug where that gets cut out so instead of trying to cut it out like a drill does it almost mills it out with these little cutters you got to have a it's got a center point here that's spring loaded and you have to have a pretty good center hole to start the hole in otherwise it'll wander on you and make a big mess but uh, if you get it cut and get a good center start in it it uh, cuts a real nice hole in sheet metal yeah, this is a nibbler just got a little blade in there and uh, pulls down and just shears off a little bit little nips of metal at a time well, that's what we used to we can sneak up to these edges with that We get it close enough that we can use the file for the rest of it. Okay, there's the first hole roughed out. This is the Hartwell latch, and uh, it fits in there pretty good. That's going to work out pretty good, I think. I need a little bit of work on this with a file, clean that up a little bit. That's going to be a pretty nice, tight cutout. This is going to go on this side like this, of course, not on the other side. A little bit of trouble with the uh, a template that I made on there that's just a piece of uh, uh, writing paper type paper whatever out of the printer and I just uh, I put this on the copier and made that uh, template cut it out and then just glued this down with some uh, stick glue uh, just some cheap well this stuff right here and it worked okay it holds it down but once I started uh, like using that uh, rotor brooch on there the spinning tore that uh, well this one it tore off pretty good but uh, it lifts a little bit um, so it get a kind of persuaded in there but, uh, it's working so I'll get this one roughed out and take the file and finish cutting them out cutouts are made for the Hartwell latches on the rear baggage door and, uh, I just got the latches taped on there now just use that for kind of a template for cutting them out and test them now. I'll go ahead and mount this up on the fuselage and make a mark on there on the frame for where these uh, little tabs go there. So I'll have to cut out that and uh, make a little notch for those tabs to go in. So, okay, those look like they're going to work pretty good. I, the tape gives me an opportunity to adjust these uh, latches to where they're going to fit just right. Uh, I had them forward a little bit so there's a pretty good gap back here now as I've opened them up I took the tape loose on it and the spring pressure from these latches uh, pushing against this um, tab this section right here pushed them back to where they're tight against there and that just barely gives uh, any latching room on that so I can slide that forward just a little bit and, and just get the optimum um, engagement for those tabs on the frame. Well, I laid out marks here for the, where those uh, tongues and those latches go uh, top and bottom and uh, then I um, run them in a half inch from the front on each side to make a little uh, receptacle there for the 
uh, tongues on those latches. My intent was now to uh, cut these out uh, vertically here on the inside and then horizontally up to the front and then bend those tabs in so there was a good uh, wearable tab uh, in there for those tongues to fit on. Well that didn't work out very well. I drilled out the corners here with a number 40 drill bit and then used the Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel to go in and cut a vertical slot in there. I couldn't get the Dremel tool in here vertically so I could make a horizontal cut with that cutoff wheel. It just wouldn't fit in there to make those cuts. So I went ahead and drilled out the corners here on both of these on the front corners and cut those out vertically and I took a drill bit and just drilled across these two lines here until I got that piece uh, loosened up and then took a, a punch and, and knocked that uh, tab out of there on both of those. And uh, that's, that's going to work out okay. This, this bottom one is just about the right size for that uh, tongue to fit into. The top one I'm going to have to open that up a little bit more uh, vertically here, give a little more room vertically. And this one is going to be fine. This one here, there's a little bit of a problem. Is this uh, channel tubing in here that uh, is the former for this uh, cage back here is right up against that framework and uh, that tab hits it when it comes closed. When it swings closed it runs into it. So I'm going to have to do something with that, uh, that channel in there to make enough clearance for that tab to close there. Alright, getting this uh, adjusted here to fit and uh, getting these uh, latches adjusted to fit. Got the holes, getting the holes um, filed out. Got them to now where they'll just uh, fit in the top. It still needs a little bit of dressing there on that hole in the top and the, and the bottom one needs some more dressing on it. A little bit of work on it. Now I was having trouble with these getting them set. When I first, when I first put them on there, I, didn't, I don't want to drill these out and put the rivets in them yet. I want to make sure they're positioned in the right spot. I want the tongues to stick far enough in here to get a good latch on it, but not so far that it uh, requires a great big hole in here and they stick in too far here. Anyway, i got to get them lined up just right. And I was using tape, uh, duct tape or masking tape to do that. And as long as these were closed, the masking tape was fine. But the spring tension on these is so much that it just uh, tore that when I would try to adjust them to use them to see if they'd fit in these slots and stuff, it just popped that tape loose. So I went and got the hot glue gun, I put some hot glue on it, and that's fine except you can't adjust this once the glue sets. You've got a short period of time to adjust it um, once the glue sets. But what I did was I got the heat gun out, I got these set on there, and then I got the heat gun out and I can heat this whole panel up right here, melt the glue enough that I can adjust this and move it around, but then um, you've got to hold on to it, hold it in position until the glue sets up, and uh, it gets pretty damn hot. Uh, fingers get pretty hot trying to hold that on there for any length of time. Uh, by the time they get uncomfortably hot and you let go, it's still warm in there and then the thing will sag. So I used a trick that I used on making the Kydex panels there. I went and dug out an ice pack out of the freezer and I can heat that up, hold it in position with my fingernails, my fingers, and then put this on there to pull the heat of it, out of it a little bit faster. And, uh, and then I can check the position on it. If it uh, needs to be adjusted a little bit, then I just hit it with the heat gun again. And I can keep the heat localized between the two of these with just one of them so that it doesn't affect the other one. So that's working out pretty good. That's going to give me a good uh, adjustment on these and get them fixed on there. And then once I get them set and get the holes all set and everything, then I can drill the holes for the rivets in these and they'll be in the right place. A little bit more work on these uh, cutouts in here. The top one is just about right. I widen it out a little bit more so I have just a little more clearance on it. And the bottom one I need to clean it up. And the door works now. There it is. It latches. Got the notches uh, far enough in there on both of them that the uh, latches work real good. The tongues work real good in there. And uh, 
they're in far enough that they'll stay. Uh, they're not going to vibrate out or anything like that. Their latches are uh, hot glued on in the right spot on these panels. So I can go ahead and drill the holes for the rivets on them and to rivet them on. So I'm happy with that.